Hey everybody, uh, in this video I want to go over my whole solar array setup. Now, uh, I do want to just briefly cover right here at the beginning that uh, part of the reason I put solar into my house and my property was because I like to dabble or I like to do cryptocurrency mining as well. Um, I, I'm definitely no professional. You can see my current mining equipment behind us. We'll call it equivalent of, I've got about two rigs um, worth of mining equipment. This is not the permanent home. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around here and show you guys the, the home. And then we're going to jump right on over and start walking you through the solar I put in my property that's helping me support well, mostly it covers my whole house and it's going to help support crypto mining as well. So let's get into this and let's switch this camera. So real quick, last year uh, we had this garage built. And so this spring I'm working on moving all my computer stuff, all things computer, out to this garage but I'm also building out a room in the garage right now. I've got two CPU rig miners. Those are the only two things I have running right now. I have some GPUs here. I've got another 3060 up here and another card there. I'm not running those right now because of the room I'm working on over this way. Let me, I'm going to fish eye the camera here a little bit so that way you can see this room. So this room in the garage is what I'm building out right now. Let me turn the light on. So in this area here, we have a nine foot by 24 foot space. And I'm working on drywall. And because I'm working on drywall it is exactly why I don't have my crypto mining rigs running. Uh, so of course, all the mudding and the dust. And once I get this done, all that stuff will be in here. Now, the important part of this video is uh, the whole solar array setup. So let's go ahead here and we're going to take a little walk. We're, well, let me turn off lights. And then we're going to take a walk out to uh, the solar array and I'll go over things out. Okay, the lights are off. Let's take a walk here. Sorry, bright lights. Uh, you'll see more of this here in a minute, but so this is the garage that we just added here to the property this past year. And I'll come back to this part, but we tied our solar panels into the house uh, right here. The big box on the upper right is a fuse box, basically. It's a big disconnect fuse box. Basically, uh, we were told when we we're doing this as a DIY project, you have to have a cutoff for electricity right here at the meter box for your solar panel. And you also need one at the solar panels arrays themselves. In case of an emergency, you can quickly disconnect all power from the solar arrays. So off this way, now, we went with a ground mount system because our ground mount system is far better for us for the amount of solar panels we needed to offset our whole electric bill. So out here where we live, we have a pool. So we're running a pool. We have a hot tub. We have run a hot tub. Our electric out here costs about 15 cents per kilowatt hour. But even with that cost, we are running electric bills in the range of roughly $350 on average per month. That was why we put in solar. That was the main reason. And because we knew we were going to do solar, I stopped crypto mining for a couple of years. I wanted to wait until we had the solar array in before we actually, before I started uh, using more electricity at that price. <clears throat> now from the meter box, from the solar array here to the front of the house where we have the meter box or the cutoff that I showed you is about 150 feet, 150, 150 
feet. Now, this array here, I believe it's a 21.8 kilowatt system, I think that's what they call it, is 52 panels. I can't remember the exact wattage. I think they're 330 watt bifacials. And on this end here is where we have the electric all going. So right here. <clears throat> so here you can see uh, the electric that we put in. And right here we have a big cutoff fuse box, just like the other end. And let's see if I can get this to open. There we go. Now in this panel box, these are just 20 amp fuses or 20 amp breakers, sorry. And each breaker has nine panels in series on them. What does that mean? That means one wire has nine panels attached to it. Each nine panels has a string, or sorry, one breaker to nine panels. So in here you can see all the different circuits, in a sense, we have. <clears throat> now, another thing is, I went with microinverters. So each and every panel, sorry, putting something down. Each and every panel has these microinverters right here. Uh, well, I'll try not to flip this around. So they're Enphase IQ7A microinverters. This adds quite a bit of cost to the setup, but I don't need a big one inverter to rule them all at, at my house. Every one of the panels has their own microinverter. Now, my readings and understanding is <clears throat> this is better because if one panel goes out, this microinverter will stop working, but the rest of the panels on the string will keep working. Whereas if this panel was in series with a bunch of other panels, I believe the whole line goes dead until you get it fixed. If I'm wrong, please put the right answer down below. I am not a professional. This is 100% do it yourself. Uh, let's see, in here I have a communications box that connects the solar array to the internet so I can monitor power. I'll open that up here in a bit and uh, let you guys see that. <clears throat> All the piping here. Uh, well, first let's go over the string. So. Currently, all the panels are in nine panel strings going horizontal. Okay, and so, yes, I only got four rows here, but nine panels down is all in one series string, and where you can see that is right here. This microinverter has a daisy chain cable here that jumps over, goes into this one, jumps over, goes into this one, so on and so forth. These two connectors are the connectors straight from the solar panel. They come right off here, and on a bifacial, I believe we have two of them. You've got one here, and then you've got another one up here. So you can see this wire runs down and plugs in, and then you got this one down and plugs in just for cable management. <clears throat> so again, the reason it's nine panels in this string is because of the amount of uh, electricity they pr produce combined is, we want to stay within the 20 amp breaker. Uh, so here is the type of panel. Hopefully this comes through. It's a Canada solar panel. Oh, uh, let's see. It says maximum power 390, so I don't know if this is a 390 watt bifacial or not, but there's the information. You guys can all look it up. Every panel has a uh, serial number or barcode, as well as every microinverter. The microinverters, this is important because 
uh, your, the software that we're using will tell us all about that. <clears throat> now, the ground mount system. Gonna be straight up honest, it's probably overkill. We just went through a company called Alt-E. Uh, we found them on the internet after literally like months and months and months of reviewing different companies. They're based out of the US, um, can't remember what state. And there's a program that we, they had a, like a, an, a solar array builder where you type in all the numbers of what you need, what you want, and it will tell you what pipes you need, what spacing they should be at, everything. And so we went through that program and typed all this stuff in and it came out saying we needed three inch galvanized quarter inch wall pipe, steel pipe. That was something I'm not used to getting and ordering, but we had to order that ourselves. Everything else was delivered to us from Alt-E, meaning these rails are iron ridge mounting system. That came from Alt-E. The brackets, the U-bolts, the U-bolts, the, the top cap to the pipe, all of that was shipped to us from Alt-E. They did not ship us the ground mount piping. In hindsight being 2020, probably would have done this with uh, two by six, well, basically womanized lumber. lumber. Uh, we didn't do that because we had no idea what we were doing. We just went with what it told us. So here, I'll take a step back so we can see more of the backside of this. Now, it's hard for me to get in the picture here, but this is as high as I can reach. I'm a six foot tall person with my hand as high as I can get. So what you got is that top post, horizontal post, is about 11 foot off the ground, maybe 12. So the size of this is a little bit misleading if you don't have a reference. Now, every panel has that micro inverter. And what that is, is, well, the reason for that, again, is so that I don't have to have one big inverter for the whole house. For somebody that, I know electricity, but I don't know how to run the numbers to calculate everything. The other benefit of doing micro inverters is if I want to add another 18 panels, I can just get 18 panels, 18 micro inverters, plug it in, and I don't have to worry about the size of or the amount of the new electricity going to the house and, and the inverter I would have there because that could mean I would have to upgrade that big inverter for the whole house. Now, there's a note here. The size of the wire you put in the ground going from the panels to your house, that does matter. So even if you put in, I were to put in 19 more panels or 18 more panels, I got breaker space. I can go ahead and add those wires in. Just let's say I put it back here. I just trench, wire it over here, pop it on a couple more breakers. I'm good. And the reason I personally know I'm good is because the wire I put in the ground, I oversized. I oversized quite a bit. Um, part of it was on accident because uh, I needed wire and I needed it today and they didn't have the gauge I wanted, which was a one gauge higher than I was going to get. Well, then I got another gauge higher than that because they were out of stock on the other stuff. Okay, so again, well, not again, how this is all working. Nine solar panels tie into a string. That string gets wired just to regular outdoor uh, electric, 20 amp electrical wire. All that goes here to a circuit breaker so I can 
turn off each individual row of nine. All of that ties through the cutoff uh, inside here. Uh, let's see, can I show it? I don't know if it's gonna let me. I don't know if it will let me open this while the arm is up. I've never tried to open those. Anyway, it's got a big fuse in here, just a really big fuse. So if there was an electrical issue out here, I could throw this and I know I'm not gonna hurt anything at the house. So that's everything out here that handles the electricity. There's one more piece out here that I also have, and that's the end phase control box. This box here monitors all the microinverters, sends all the information to the internet. And so I had to use for that, this pipe here has a direct berry category six network wire going from here all the way into my house, plugged into my home network so it's connected to the internet. Okay, I'm going to break right here while I undo this panel so you can see this. So this part was a little bit confusing for me. Um, on the electrical drawings that we got, we purchased an electrical permit or drawing package from Alt-E that was the package of information we submitted to our local township and electric company to uh, get them to approve all of this. On that drawing, you have this controller right here. Sorry, I don't know the, the version of this controller. Maybe you can see it here. No, that's just numbers. So, sorry. So this controller, here's the DirectBerry Cat 6 line that goes, again, about 170 feet underground. And yes, I did run it with the electric. I put about one shovel full of dirt between the electrical wiring and the DirectBerry Cat 5, uh, category six. Next thing is, this thing needs power. So what you have here is a little bit of the power lines that run over here and they get power to turn this on. And then the blue and white, that is a sensor that goes into the panel on the other side, the electrical panel that we have. Um, some some places are calling things breakout boards, and I don't know. I'm I'm just calling it electrical panel. That's what I purchased. That's what's been approved. Right or wrong, I don't know. I oh Alt E did not supply that either. They supplied this, but they didn't supply this box. They just supplied this. They didn't supply the electrical panel, but they did supply the big cutoff uh, fuses. Uh, let's see. So the blue and white is uh, basically, it comes over, goes into the electrical panel. And it's got a little, I think, donut that clamps around the amount of electric that we're sending to the house. And that's how it's monitoring how much electric is being produced out here. The confusing part. On the electrical drawings, it shows this panel in the front of the house. But my setup is way out here, 150 feet away, ground mount. So I put it out here. So I could take this wire, put it into the panel and monitor everything. What I didn't really think about is, I guess I could have put this up at the house at the other end of the DirectBerry wire and got the same reading. I didn't know, I just was, looking at this wire was really short and I didn't know how to extend that wire 150 feet. I'm a computer nerd, so I knew how to extend a Cat6 wire 170 feet, or in this case, I just bought a DirectBerry uh, 150 foot wire, threw it all over there. As soon as it gets in my house, it goes into a network switch and I jump where I need to from there. So. That's how the communication works. So all the electricity is produced. This monitors it, sends that information to the internet. Now, when you first set this up, I had to download a installers app on my cell phone and I had to go through the installer app 
and authorize this solar array setup. I didn't know what I was doing, but I stumbled my way through the software. Basically, I had to register my whole solar array with Enphase, and that software program was a different phone app than the one I used to just to check my daily production. Okay, with all this covered, I will try to now <laughs> go into the house here and we will see if I can't go through um, a bunch of the pictures and additional information you're gonna to wanna to know now that you've seen the setup, you probably want extra details, pricing, all this kind of stuff. So let's pause it here and I'll be rejoining you at a computer. So altestore.com is the website that we went to and decided upon for purchasing our solar array do-it-yourself kit. Uh, they were really helpful to us. Uh, we talked to them on a phone and yeah, they helped us out with a lot of the process of getting the, the stuff and getting everything that we needed for the solar array ground mount system setup. So I would recommend them. Now let's talk about the st starting point for where I was when trying to go solar here. So first things first, I went through and let me zoom in here. We calculated how much we had, how much electricity we had used the previous year. And at our house, we had used 23.8 kilowatts for the whole year. So that gave us an average of 65 kilowatts per day. Uh, let's see. So an average cost per kilowatt is around 14.5 cents. Uh, that's my initial math. But then when I updated my math, uh, it actually came out to about 15 cents a day. Now, these other numbers are based on after we turned it on. So that's what you see in green here. But the initial calculations, this is what we are trying to crush, is 23,800 kilowatt hours for the year. I looked at it from the aspect of I want to kill it for the year, not just for today. Now, I live in the southwest corner of Michigan, about an hour and a half away from Chicago. And, you know, so everybody says, oh, don't do solar in Michigan. It's not cost effective. It's not worth it. You be the judge of that. I I went solar. I'm extremely happy I did. Uh, I might be a more financially uh, stable and able to do what I did, but I'm still extremely happy I did this. The second thing was acquiring all the parts and pieces and parts. So we went to uh, the wonderful Alti store, talked to them. They came up with a kit based on me telling them I need, I want to get to as close to eliminating this as possible, as close to eliminating the 23,000 kilowatts per year. And so, <clears throat> uh, I had them spec out the system for me. Now, the reason I went ground mount instead of rooftop mount is because I don't, because I have land. That's the first reason. The second reason is if it's up on my roof and one panel has an issue and it's in the middle of all the panels, uh, how do I get into the middle of this array on my roof without breaking the other panels to get to it? Two, let's say my roof develops a leak or my roof shingles are just so old they have to be replaced. Well, that would now mean I'd have to rip the whole array off my roof to redo my roof. I don't like that idea when I have the land. So we went with ground mount system for that reason. Surprising enough, it was more expensive to go ground mount system uh, because 
all the places are geared towards rooftop mounts and yeah ground mount was different so we talked with alt e they gave us numbers and now here are the numbers here you go alt e solar 52 solar panel do-it-yourself kit we had to pay them in cash uh, $30,649.87 up front, all at once. Now, we did that. You could probably do that with some sort of a loan. Uh, we did it with a home equity loan and basically just wrote a cashier's check, went to our bank, got a cashier's check, sent it to them. Uh, so that was us doing a lot of trust, giving them that much money and not having having anything shown for it. But it is what it is, and it worked out great. Alt E was surprisingly fast. Uh, then we had to get some solar labels, twenty dollars permit package. This was the extra package that they offered that we purchased for three hundred and thirty six dollars. That's the package that we gave to our uh, electrical. Uh, I don't know what you call them. Uh, the permit office, basically, here in our township. And uh, the electric company. So we gave it to them. They never said anything. Yes, no, nothing. They just said, okay. Okay. Now, the next thing is, uh, in the Alt-E solar kit, they told me I needed galvanized pipe. So I had to order that separately, local source. So I got it from Elro Steel. $6,365. Now, this took me a long time to get. Um, I just didn't know where to get steel pipe of this magnitude from. Again, in hindsight, uh, lumber probably would have been just fine. Um, yeah. So we did overkill here. Uh, then cutting wheel discs so I could cut the pipes. Uh, I'd have the pipes put into the ground. They go like five foot down into the ground, five feet into the ground. Uh, that was another, uh, $2,000 about for the concrete. We paid 700 for a guy to come out with his Bobcat and help with cement work. Then we got facet, uh, fasteners, circuit breakers, outdoor electrical panel. This is everything absolutely everything and uh let's see my head's in the way let me zoom out a little bit more this is how much it costs do it yourself kit this is 100 all of our expenses forty three thousand three hundred and forty four dollars that may sound like a lot but please bear in mind our electric bill for the last 16 months is zero dollars. 16 months at zero dollars. The next thing is our government gives a 30% tax break. So we spent this much, but then in January, well, when we did taxes, we got $13,000 back in taxes. So let's say 11,000 of that was from the $43,000 here. So we ended up paying $32,000 for a 21 kilowatt system that, re that took our $350 a month electric bill and dropped it to zero on average across 16 months. Um, I went with a grid tied system because the batteries they're too expensive so that's why you don't see any batteries here we're grid tied um every uh, company that every electric company has their own rules for how they do overproduced electric and what happens so if i overproduce electric they give me credit at 11 cents per kilowatt hour again i'm paying about 15 cents a kilowatt hour is what I pay. Our company will give us 11 cents per kilowatt extra as credit. Now, this is, I think, rare for a lot of electric companies. Our electric company also, uh, they reset their customers' solar billing and all this at the end of June. 
if I have a credit built up, my electric company will send me a paper check for the dollar amount of extra electricity that I sold them. At the end of June last year, we got a $174 check. $174 check. Uh, so then the next thing is, is uh, there's another helpful site you should know about, and this is ironridge.com. They have design tool online program that will help you design your solar array. And basically I'm going to cut through all the details here and just say, uh, the alt E store uses their calculator on this website as part of the drawing package that they will throw you, um, when you buy their, uh, their do it yourself kit. Uh, they, I mean, I didn't realize it at the time, but basically part of this $336 are drawings from the Iron Ridge sites, uh, designer program. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Now let's, uh, I know this is a long video. <laughs> Bear with it. I've got the details. And if you have questions, leave them below. Ask me questions. I more than willing to tell people, uh, all about this, all the details that you might want to know. Uh, if you live near me and you want to come out and physically see the system, uh, let me know, leave a comment, uh, send me a private message, and we can make it happen. Uh, let's see. So now let's get into, we send them a check for $30,000, site unseen, company unknown, and we send them the check, and then we just waited. And so we waited and uh, within, I think it was two weeks, they drop shipped 52 solar panels and all the accessories, wiring, microinverters, two weeks. So we gave them 30 grand. Two weeks later, we got stuff. I wasn't ready for stuff, but we got it all right. So, you know. I'm not going to show every picture here, but uh, that's how the panels were delivered. I know a lot of them these days get delivered vertically, uh, but we had not, nothing. This was horizontal, but the other box we got was vertical. So I don't know. Um, we restacked everything into our pole barn, not the new garage we had built, because we were not ready for uh, actually setting this up. And so again, here's the uh, brand of the solar panels. Uh, okay, so now we get into, uh, it was time to start building this. So we dug holes, we lined up pipes, and let's see, then we called Boss Concrete. That's my cat. And you know, we had them help put in and fill concrete in here and all that kind of stuff. Once the concrete was nice and stable, we came in and again, this part was DIY. So me and my wife figured out ways to hang all this ver a horizontal piping. The stuff is heavy, 22 feet long, heavy. Uh, and that was again, 12 foot in the air and I don't have a way to lift it. That was a challenge. Uh, da -da. So now we start building it. So this picture here, we here's the Iron Ridge frame that we got from them, and you start we started putting up the frame, uh, the Iron Ridge frame on the ground mount framing, and here you go, hung our first panel, and this took multiple days. Uh, so here you can see about how big this is because we got some people standing here. That's just the first row. And then we have the next row. Here's the back side. I'm just letting you guys see, we literally did this ourselves, um, And these are the pictures I took along the way. And uh, then here's where we had them all up. 
all the microinverters in place. Now we got all the microinverters in place, but we still hadn't actually gotten in touch with an electrician to do anything. Um, we, we didn't think ahead enough. Okay, so we had all the panels done. Uh, let's see here. This is 100% everything was done out here, but we didn't have a trench in the ground or any electrical yet. Um, yeah, just didn't think ahead. So we dropped in a board here to mount the stuff to, and we ran a trench. The electrical wire and this other thin black wire is the network communication wire. Uh, and then we paid an electrician to come out and actually do all the wiring. I didn't do, I didn't mount any boxes. An electrician did that. And let's see. Okay, this shows the trench. So again, we trenched all the way out here. I rented a trencher. I did that myself. And all this. And I don't have the rest of the pictures on here. And you, you, you saw the video in the beginning of the end of it all. But it ran all the way here. Uh, the trench came up here, tied in. Now the end, the last part to get it to turn, get the system turned on, uh, we had to call the electric, well, we had to schedule the electric company. I'm clicking on the wrong picture. This one. We had to schedule the electric company to come out and swap the meter on our house was an old meter. They had to swatch it to swap it to a digital meter. They did this literally the day before. Well, actually, the day we wanted to turn it on. They came out and swapped the meter. We just called them up, said what we were doing. Uh, our electrician had finished everything. He said it was good to go. And they came out, swapped the meter. I we They swapped the meter. Nobody was even here. And they basically checked everything and said it was good to go, but to give it 24 hours for the meter to calibrate before we turned it on. And once we turned it on, then I had to go on my phone into the Enphase software and actually go through the process of uh, configuring the software and setting it up. I'm not going to show that on here. Uh, It'll just take too long. This video is already really long, but I want to make sure I give you guys as much detail as you would like. Uh, let's see. So you set up uh, this account here is N phase right here. It's 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 N phase. And this is the account where I can check uh, how much I'm producing. So we sign in. And so there we go. We got our 52 uh, panels. And if we go with a graph view, this is the electricity we've produced today. So you can see how much we're producing just today. Today's total is 104 kilowatts. If you remember, we use on average 65 kilowatts per day. So the fact that we've produced 104 today means I've produced about double the energy I need today than I would normally use. Again, I live in Michigan. We have a lot of cloudy days. So I need to overproduce on the sunny days. That gives me credits with the electric company. So on the cloudy days, I'm still not necessarily actually paying anything. Oh, let's see. Is there another view I can show you? Power today, power yesterday was. Oh, that's not a good way. This, I don't like this graph. Is it reports going to show me here? Site recent power production. Oh, that's not what I want. I normally use the app on my phone. Uh, let's see. Energy. Ah, this is the one I'm looking for right here. So here you can see I got 107 today. Yesterday it was cloudy. Um, 
I had 21 total kilowatts yesterday, 43 the day before, 131, 77, 131, 131. Uh, so that's how much electricity we're producing here in Michigan. There's a lot more I could go over. I don't know what parts I've missed, so I'm going to drop it right here. Please leave a comment below, like, subscribe. All of this is what allows me to get back into crypto mining during a bear where there's no profits to be had. I can turn on two crypto mining rigs and have a zero dollar cost. Zero. Because I'm making enough electricity to do so. So I can be profitable where nobody else is. I say solar's worth it. Uh, even if I wasn't crypto mining, solar's worth it. It's just, you know, get the size to kill your whole electric bill. If you can do it, go all out. Get it done. Do it yourself to save a ton of money. A ton. I've got double the size of a system for about half the price of what an installer was going to sell me. And that was on three different quotes. Anyway, peace out.